Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. You know, with the band still uh, playing a little behind me, I really sense God's heart really strong this morning and sense His presence. Amen. And I just want to share this before we go any further. You know, I don't mind if we never get to the message. Because to me, when God personally moves and we start having our own encounters with the Lord, that's what's really important. Amen. We, we need something more than just a sermon. Somebody who's speaking, we, we need Jesus in our lives in a very personal way. Amen. Now, I was sensing what, what the heart of the Father is this morning as we're worshiping, and I felt like the Lord wanted to reintroduce His love to many this morning. Because yesterday, the only love that we know is yesterday's love. And that's what you thought was love. I want to say it one more time. Yesterday's love is what you thought was love. It's how you define love. And however you define love is a accumulation of your own personal experience and things that have happened in your life, good, bad, or ugly, has defined your love. But I really felt strongly the Lord saying that I'm introducing this season, I'm reintroducing myself to you, and I'm reintroducing my love to you. And what that means for some of us, if not all of us, we're going to have to learn love all over again. I say this one more time. You're going to have to let go. We're going to have to let go of what we defined as love yesterday. As God is introducing his love to us in a new way this, this morning. And we're going to have to learn love all over again his way. And when we learn his love his way. He becomes our defender. And he fights for us. See, because when we line up with him, he becomes our defender. Isn't that what we're seeing this morning? That it's better this way. It's better when God is for you, not against you. It's better when he's defending you. It's better when he's introducing himself to you so that you know his love. Not, not everyone else's love. His love. The love of Jesus, the love of His presence is different from the love that we know on this planet. And so some of us have to go through this whole process of knowing His love differently. Not the kind of love that your parents have passed down to you or what has come through the bloodline from generations. Not the kind of love that we see that's in this world that comes short and disappoints and fails us in so many ways. Allowing us to sometimes feel rejected. No, I'm talking about a different kind of love that's not in this world. I'm talking about God is introducing His love from above. And it's a new way. It's a new life. And His love is going to reshape you and me. To the point that we start making decisions differently. Based on this new love. Not the kind of love of yesterday. Because if you made decisions based on yesterday's love. You'll still be walking into the same trouble. That you've been experiencing yesterday. And you'll bring it into your future. But God's giving us another opportunity to know his love. And I felt really strongly to share that. Before we go anywhere else this morning. But if that is something that you're sensing in your heart this morning, just raise your hand or just say, hey, you know what? I bear witness with that word this morning. And I want to pray. So, so here's the thing. We think we know love. We think we know love. But oftentimes the love that we know is human love. And we know that human love comes short. We know that humans who are in this fallen nature always fall short. How many know that? 
including your spouse, how many of you know that they come short and they fail? How many of you know that we can get hurt from the people that are close to us? Because the love that we know here is not perfect. We are always end up getting to a place of, you know, knowing what it means to be rejected. But if you're willing, God is willing to introduce himself in a new way. If you're willing, he's really, he's introduced, he'll introduce love, a different kind of love that you've learned from yesterday years. And it'll reshape you and shape the way you make decisions in this new day. And that will lead to a different kind of life. Father, in Jesus' name, we just praise you and thank you for this morning. We thank you for allowing us to be in the house of the Lord. And we thank you for your word this morning. I thank you for this word that you've shared with each and every one of us. For those that really sense that this is for them, Lord, I pray that you will move in their lives with your grace, with your truth, and that you reintroduce yourself to them in a different light, in a different way, and introduce your love and your life to them. And, it, and, and Lord, I know it's going to be a learning process because learning something new is always a process, but help them to learn your love in a new light. Help, help them to know what it means to make right decisions. Help them to learn what it means to love to forgive. Help them to know what it really means to have rest and peace in their lives. Help them to know what it really means to discern correctly so that they're not in a position of always judging, being critical. But that they will have purity in heart. Pray a blessing over them right now. Jesus, and we're excited about what you're, you have for them and for what you have in store for their future. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's give the Lord a good praise. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Wave to someone before you take a seat. Amen. Good morning. Good morning, church. How's everyone doing this morning? Yeah, just wanted to welcome everyone online that's watching on Facebook Live. Uh, thank you for joining us this morning and uh, just for praying, uh, uh, praying for us, supporting us, and ho hoping that every word that you receive from this ministry that you are learning and growing and being encouraged in your walk with the Lord. So once again, we thank you for uh, tuning in this morning, and I know that God has a word for all of us. Amen and amen. You know, I have a, <clears throat> lately I noticed that what God has been sharing with me, it's not always easy to share. <laughs> not always easy to talk, you know. Jesus was not always a popular man in his day. How many know that? Sometimes I wonder about popularity and those that are unpopular. Sometimes I think, you know, because the Old Testament, the prophets, they were all, they were not popular, they were unpopular. The apostles in the New Testament were unpopular. They were not that popular. Many people wanted to, governments were after them, religious people were after them, persecution was to the left and to the right. They wanted to take them out because their message that carry was very unpopular. So I don't know who wants to be called to preach the gospel. Because this very unpopular, but we, uh, evidently has become very popular in our world. But I think things are changing because I think the message is changing. And the reason why the message is changing is because it's, I think we're going back to what really what we should be preaching and what we should be teaching. Come on, we're, we're not preaching compromise, we're preaching absolute truth from God's Word. And that's the very thing that convicts people and that's the very thing that makes us uncomfortable. Come on. And when it's uncomfortable, we run away. Come on, we run away, right? How many know that when Adam sinned, he hid and ran for his life? I'm, gonna, I'm not going near God. I'm not going to go near his presence. That's what happens to all of us. We 
whether we know it or not, we're all affected by that. Can you say amen to that? All right, so i got to move along because there's a lot of content that I've shared with you this morning, and I want to make sure that I get it all in. And uh, we do have communion because this is the first Sunday of every month, and that's when we celebrate communion in Christ so that we can uh, prepare for that at the end of the message this morning. For everyone that's watching this morning, whatever you have in your household, bread, uh, any juice will do. It's all symbolic uh, representing Christ, and you can join us in communion at the end of this message. All right, this is Heaven's House, part 29. Um, I hope everybody's enjoying the series. It's been, uh, so far, I think it's been eye-opening for my, myself personally. I'm learning along with everyone else. And so this morning, I want to talk about something that we've been talking about for the last several Sundays, I guess, talking about getting into the Word of God and how the Word of God washes our lives and causes us to uh, um, know our own heart, right? Last week we talked about how the Word of God is able to judge our motives in our thoughts and that we are not qualified to do that, but we know the Word, God, the Word of God does that perfectly so that we understand our motives. How many know that sometimes it's very hard to know our motives? And it's difficult to judge our motives, our own desires sometimes, and um, the doctor can't do it, the dentist can't do it, the experts can't do it. But the Bible tells us that the Word of God is, is like a double-edged sword, a sharper than any shor- uh, sword in the world. That means it's able to divide and help us to distinguish and know what's really in our heart. So I want to continue along that theme. This morning, my subtitle is Chew Your Food. Everybody say, Chew Your Food. All right, not everybody chews their food, but let's, this is what we're going to talk about, chew your food. Um, this weekend, we had a, a time with our staff, and we ate a lot, and I had to remind myself, chew your food. So according to Healthline.com, and you can look it up if you want and do further studies on your own, but it reads like this, according to Healthline.com, When you think about eating, you may think of the work that happens in your stomach and intestines. But the entire digestive process starts in your mouth with chewing. When you chew your food, it gets broken down into smaller pieces which are easier to digest. And when mixed with saliva, right, chewing allows your body to extract the the greatest possible, listen, the greatest possible amount of nutrition, nutrients, I'm sorry, from the food you eat. I know that we probably all know this, right? Uh, I think in one website it said that you got to chew at least 30 t- 32 times. Does anybody chew 32 times before you swallow? We have only one hand. All right. You can download the app, so every time you chew, it'll click for you. And I'll tell you, 32, 32, swallow, digest that food. I'm just joking. I I don't know if there's an app like that. So anyways, amen. The same science and principle can be found in the Bible. Did you know that? It's summed up in one word. It's called meditation. And we're going to be talking about meditation. We're going to be talking about getting the best of God's Word for big results. I'll say this one more time. Best, okay, we're going to get the, we're going to learn how to get the best out of God's Word for big results. How many want big results? All right. I want big results, okay. And so it's all summed up in meditation. Meditation, let's pray. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you for this morning. We thank you for all those that are watching online or online community. We thank you for all those that are here this morning and uh, in the house of the Lord. Pray that all those that are willing to receive, that they will receive what you have for them. Bless them. Bless each person that hears the word of the Lord. We ask this in Jesus' name, and everyone says amen and amen. So we cannot eat God's word whole, okay? Now, if you know the Bible is pretty big, and we just cannot, you know, eat the Bible whole. You know what I mean? You can't eat a loaf of bread. 
Uh, how many eat, you know, when we have pasta, when you have French bread, we, we slice it, right? Do we not slice it? Or do we just, <laughs> like the cartoons, right? You watch the cartoons, they, they do super, supernatural things. <laughs> but we can't do that. We slice it into pieces. Slices, slice it into pieces. So to have the best results, we have to spend time chewing. Everybody say chewing. The Word of God, one bite size at a time. So rushing, listen carefully, rushing through church service mentality, the rushing mentality that we have now in our world. How many can say yes? I understand the rushing mentality. All right, rushing through prayer, rushing through the Word does not help us grow. It does, listen, it does not help us grow. If you're not chewing, I'm not chewing, nothing is happening in the digestive system. We're not getting the best out of the Word of God if we are not chewing, if we are not meditating. Now, meditation is, you see it through the Word of God, and uh, we'll go deeper as we, as we move along. But it's not helping us. Rushing is not helping us. Life has become a rush. Everybody say, just rush. Life has become a rush. You're rushing in your house, rushing out of your house, rushing in the market, rushing out of the market. How many know what I'm talking about, right? I think they're going to start making those carts with motors in it. All you have to do is jump in there and zoom through the aisles with incredible speed. And then you'll have a robot on there that will just pick anything off the shelves as you move along. Just computerized. And you're out. I'm just pretending but I'm just talking about how fast life is, all right? Life has become a rush, robbing, robbing us of skills necessary, listen carefully, to wait upon the Lord. It's a lost art. Skills necessary to wait upon the Lord. We lack the discipline to be in His presence, listen, long enough to have a real encounter with Him. We just don't know how to wait. Wait is, we don't know how to do it. We don't, we, we don't have that discipline because the way our world system works. Waiting is a skill that is yet to be developed in many. I really believe that. I myself had to learn that along the way. It took some time for me to learn that. Remember when you were dating. How many remember when you were dating? Okay. No one wants to remember when you were dating, I don't see any hands raising up. No one wants to remember that day of dating. Okay, I got it. All right, so, but you would spend hours talking to each other. Am I correct? You know, talking for hours on the phone. Oh, yeah. Hours pass, you think it's just a few minutes, <laughs> and you just keep on talking, right? Hours go on, you guys. Go out and what? Eat, you spend lots of money, right? Uh, pretending that you do have money, but you go out anyways, and we act like we have a money tree in our backyard, right? Money is never going to end. And then you look and realize that you have weeds in your backyard, and you don't have a money tree, and the weeds are stealing your money because you need money to whack the weeds out, right? Why do we spend time on what is important? Because the investment, okay, the investment we make is beneficial. That's why we invest in what is important. If movies do not have enough action or drama to keep our attention, we check out and move on to the next exciting thing. If sermons are not interesting, entertaining enough and don't match the action-packed movies that we watch from week to week. Things, you know, action-packed movies, drama that we enjoy, we check out. How many know that God is the most action-packed person in the universe? He is, he is Rambo of the universe. Just recently, I saw, that, I saw this little video clip in, 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 of Rambo and and I was laughing because uh, Zane did something, and it was Zane. Zane was Rambo in that video. I was like, who's that face? Uh, it was Zane. He, Zane is Rambo. Okay, for those that 
inside joke. You know what I'm talking about. It's a, <laughs> Zane is Rambo. God possesses more power than any of our superheroes on the screen. Anything he's up to, guess what? We should get excited about. Right? If God's up to something, we should be excited about it. Waiting on God should get us excited. Should it? Talking to God should pump us up. Right? Worshiping God should what? Energize us. Getting to the Word should be something that we should look forward to. Going to church should not be a task. There should be some kind of excitement and energy because you know what you're looking forward to. Because worship is exciting. Because the presence of God is exciting. And because getting into the Word is exciting. And praying is exciting. And being a part of what God is up to is exciting. Come on. Amen. But we see the opposite today in many different ways and many different levels. I think the world system has strategically overstimulated us to the point that we're unable to be still enough to hear God and hear His Word. We're so overstimulated. And I think that there could be an agenda behind this because we know that we have an adversary. And if he could overstimulate you and fill you with all kinds of things um, so that he can, uh, you know, prevent you from having that ability to wait and know God. The ability to know God. Something to think about. We want everything short because we lack the discipline to wait upon God, which is, listen, it's really the key to our, our relationship with Him. It really is. Um, and that is something that we need to learn. I think that's what something, you know, I don't know. How many know that love, this is just coming, I don't know, from, from my mind right now. How many know that love is worth waiting for? And I think I remember a story out of the Old Testament. I think it was, uh, I, want to, I, want, I want to say it was Jacob who waited for his first wife for seven years. And then he, and then he waited for 14 years for the one he really wanted to marry. You guys remember? The, you know, there's this waiting thing that goes on. And, and I think that in the waiting, we begin to discover God himself. There's something about waiting where God begins to introduce himself in a personal way to us much more greater than someone that's on a platform just sharing another message or something. Because it becomes, listen, it becomes real to you. That's the most important thing. Right? It's you. It's, it's your relationship with God and what God is doing in you at the end of the day. Listen, we make noise for things we love, don't we? Right? I don't know. I'll just throw out examples like, you know, if you're a 49 or a Raider because that's what goes on in my family. 49ers, ah, oh, make some noise. We make a bunch of noise, right? Raiders, ah, oh, make some noise. I'm not saying good or bad about any of the teams. I'm just trying to illustrate an example how we make noise for the things that we love, right? Now, we have some outrageous birthdays, and, and people get a little bit alarmed because we make a lot of noise in our birthday parties, so anybody that's new that comes into our radar system and sits down and says, oh, we're having a little bit of birthday, we're going to sing happy birthday, we have a cake, some lights, and all of a sudden everybody goes ballistic, and the person going, dude, what, what is this? What's going on here? What, what is wrong with this family? Because we're making all kinds of noise. We're all like, ah! And we're doing it for like an hour, like it's ridiculous. And they're like, okay, when is the yelling going to stop or the excitement is going to stop? Does it ever? And if somebody claps, they, everybody claps for another hour. And they're like, okay, something's bizarre is going on here. These guys are making way too much noise for this, for this birthday party. And we make a lot of noise because we get a lot. We get excited about things, don't we? And there's nothing wrong with that. Okay, so here we go. If other activities are more important than loving God, 
All right, this is the hard part, but listen, it's the good part. Other activities are more important than loving God, than church, listen, prayer, His presence, His Word becomes less exciting and it falls into the category of boring and empty. If something is more exciting than God, could it be that you found something you love more than God? Could it be something more that you love something more than God? Look, I, you get excited, so I, I get excited about a lot of different things. Things that I like to do, things that I love, things that, you know, that I make a lot of noise behind. But to me, the most exciting thing in my own life is, is really God in my life and the journey that He brings me into and what He shares with me in this life. To me, that's the most exciting thing. And that's what makes my home. Come on. That's what blesses my life. It's what keeps me protected and sheltered. It's what provides. It's what supplies. It's what connects me with good people in my life. I love what God is doing. He's always doing something fresh and new and exciting. I'm glad that I'm part of that journey. So anything outside of God that makes you excited, I'm just saying, could it be that you, is there something that you love more than God? I mean, I don't know if excitement gets you up in the morning to get to the house of God anymore. For a lot of people, there isn't, that doesn't exist anymore through this whole pandemic thing. I think that uh, 60, what, 60% of people have left and are not planning to come back to God at all. Because a crisis has a way of exposing our hearts to see where we really stand. The fire of God, like this pandemic, comes through and has a way of revealing the, man, the work of man's hand to see if it's his hand that is at work or God's hand, come on, is at work. All right? I'm not saying that we can't love anything. All I'm saying is that where you are, right, is where your heart is. And how many know that scripture? Where your heart, where you, where you are is where your heart is. And it's out of Matthew 6, 21, just to let you know that I didn't say it, but Brother Matthew did. If you know Matthew, he's the one who said it, so blame him. I have nothing to do with this. Matthew 21, NIV, for where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Uh, so I don't have to really elaborate on it too much. don't have to give you a big commentary on it this morning. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. So that's just Scripture, just reading Scripture. We have treasure we all value, don't we? I know I have some treasure at home and you guys have treasure at home, right? Uh, we have treasure in our, in our pockets sometimes. So sometimes I have you know, a couple of pennies and quarters and dimes. I mean, to me, that's a treasure today. One day when there is no money, I'm going to put this in a build a museum and say, this is what money looked like back in my day. Treasure. Charge everybody for that and make some money. Amen. We have treasure we all value. Whether it be an activity we love, hobby, we enjoy, things we cherish, uh, whatever we treasure we spend our days on. Can I say that one more time? Whatever we treasure we spend our days on. Whatever we treasure the most is what we talk about the most. What do you talk about the most during the day? What do you talk about the most when you're with your spouse? What do you talk the most about when you're with your children? What do you talk about the most throughout the week? What we treasure the most is what we support the most. Come on. What we treasure the most, we invest time the most. So if the will of God is your treasure, then most likely you will spend most of your days or most of your time seeking His will. Yes? You can say amen or yes, or you can say yes and amen, or amen, yes, 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 and, uh, or you could rap, and, or you could sing your own song. Amen? amen? Seeking 
His will. You'll spend your days seeking the Lord. So I find this to be true with biblical characters because everyone that I know in the Bible that loved God spent most of their time pursuing God. Are you spending your time pursuing God? Are you pursuing God? Are you spending all your time? What are you spending all your time on? Are we spending time pursuing God? Sure, you might say. We have careers, we have jobs. We're talking about people in the Bible. Don't you know they work too? They have families, just like us. But they lived what? For God. And they put Him first above all else. Does that make sense? You know, in the garden, referring to Genesis, God went, went looking for Adam. You know the story, right? We know that Adam sinned, and one day God was walking in the garden looking for him. God went looking for Adam, calling out to him. But he wasn't there, right? He was missing. Adam is usually here in my presence, but he is not. And this is what happened. Adam, you're usually right here in my presence, but he is not. Something to think about. He's usually in the Word of God. He is not. He's usually praying. He is not. And we know that Adam and Eve never returned to the garden. In fact, they were kicked out. We know the story. And this is what happens when we lose our purpose. We drift away. We drift away. And anything that has to do with God and what He's doing no longer excites us. At one point, we're praying, but we're missing. At some point, we're gathering with God's people. We're missing. At one point, we're in His presence worshiping, We are missing. And God says, usually Adam is here, but he is not. He is not. Why so many people go to church and yet yield so little fruit? One of the main reasons for this, we are not, you got it, you guys got it. We're not chewing what we're listening to long enough to allow it to digest in our system. You could hear a thousand sermons for 30 years and nothing really happened. Nothing really changes in your life. One of the main reasons is that we're not chewing on the Word of God long enough. We listen, but we're not chewing. Taking time to chew is called meditation. Everybody say meditation. And we are meditating, we are meditating on God's Word But there is also a right way of meditating on God's Word. I hear it all the time, yeah, I read the Word, I'm meditating on the Word. But did you know there's a right way of doing it? To get the best out of the Word, right? You know, if coming from Hawaii, we would would chew uh, uh, sugar cane, right? My uncles used to chop it down, come here, and we get scared with we're not sure what he's doing with a machete in his hand. Come here, son. And we're like, oh, uncle, what, 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 what do you want me for? Come here. <laughs> but he's giving us the sugar cane. And then when we get the sugar cane, we know that we have to keep chewing to get all that good, pure sugar sweetness out of the sugar cane. You guys know what I'm talking about, right? Okay, just remember that I'm not talking about the machete. Okay, I am talking about the Word of God. I don't want to scare anybody with a machete. All right. So in this pandemic, we have an opportunity to reevaluate our spiritual lives. That really took place for me, and I'm still, it's still ongoing for me. I am taking time to reevaluate. Sometimes I think God steps in, reintroduces His love, because I think sometimes we think we know. How many know what I'm talking about? We think we know. And God has to introduce himself to us. So we have an opportunity to reevaluate our spiritual life. This would be a good time to make the necessary changes 
so we can move forward in our faith. So here, the first principle to get the best out of God's Word, as I said earlier, but I want to say it this way, this is uh, Pastor Kimo's vocabulary, which does not exist in this world. Just want you to know that. The dictionary is not on sale yet, but I will publish something so that you can understand me better. So here's the first principle. I call it marination principle. For all those chefs, you know what that means, right? Marinate, everybody say marination principle. Well, what is marination? Here we go. According to uh, Wikipedia, it reads like this. Marination is the process of soaking foods in season, often acidic liquid before cooking. It is commonly used to flavor foods and to tenderize tough, tougher cuts of meat. Tenderize all that flavor so that your palate can go, mmm, bursting with flavor. Delicious, right? Odoricious, right? All right. So listen, before we cook a meat product, whatever it might be, it sits and wait. I mean, I might as well close, I can close it right here. I might as well call an altar call and everybody come up and let's change our lives together. Right? Sit and wait. But we don't want to wait. You know, sometimes you have kids coming out. Uh, we're, uh, what do you, well, it's still marinating. We'll just give it some time. Well, when is going to be done? Next week, what? Going to have that thing tenderized for a few days. What do you mean a few days? A few days seems like a thousand years. All right? So it's waiting, marinating to get deep within all its flavors, and this changes the meat to f- flavorless to booming with flavor. And all the people that love food say amen and amen. So Isaiah 40, verse 31, well-known portion of verse that we all know so, so well, reads like this. I got the King James Version, reads like this. But they that wait. I can even stop here too, I suppose. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings, right, as eagles. And they shall run and not be weary. And they shall walk and not faint. I want to break this down really quickly because I know that we have a very short period of time. So if you're willing to wait a little bit longer, I'll break it down to you. Is that okay? You guys all right? Are you guys marinating? Okay, I'm just checking if you're marinating. Are you being tenderized yet? Being tenderized in your heart? It's getting tender with all that good flavor, right? All right, because if you do that, then everybody loves you. You have lots of flavor. All right, I'll break it down. Number one, they that wait. The way I would say it, they that marinate. They that marinate in His presence, number one. They that marinate in His presence. We need to learn to soak in God's presence and not be in a rush. Don't come here with a rush mentality. Don't go into your prayer time with a rush mentality. Don't go into the Word with a rush mentality. Don't go into your relationship like everybody else do in a rush mentality. You know, on the first day, we've got to do everything. No, you don't have to do everything one day. You don't have to say, hey... Uh, I don't know who you are. Let's get married. Bow down. I got married. What's the rush? I don't know. You look good to me. Let's just get married. That's how it works. You know what I mean? No rushing in God's presence. Do we not chew food slowly to enjoy all of its flavors? Okay. I know that Johnny does that well. I witnessed that personally yesterday. And some, you ever see like the cow or the, you know, the lamb? They go, mm, go. And like, do they ever swallow? They just, mm, all that flavor. Mm, so good, right? Enjoy, right? All this flavor. 
When we wait, we are allowing the flavors of God and His purpose to sink deep into our souls. So whenever I get the Word of God, you know, I spend time chewing on that. And I may be on a Word for a while. It could be for the whole day or for the whole week. In some cases for me, it was years I would meditate on the same Word, chewing everything out of it. You know what I mean? So... That is important. Marination process cannot be rushed, otherwise the heart will not be tenderized with good flavor. How many want God to change your heart and be tenderized? Okay, then you've you got to chew God's Word long enough. You've got to meditate on God's Word enough. It's, it's not like a sermon you hear on a radio, somebody speaking, and it just goes one ear and out of the, ear, out of the other ear without even tenderizing your heart. It's not doing anything for us. No wonder we're not growing. No wonder 30, 40 years later, we still find ourselves in a tough, hard, hard place still. And when we come together, we're not just attending a service. We come to marinate in His Word, in His presence. And that's why gathering together is so important. So I hope you have a different perspective. Next Sunday, when you come to church, you coming to marinate. Not because you're punching in for that 145 minutes and I got to get out of here because I got to eat real food, right? Some of us are here and we're all having a big Mac attack. Follow the yellow rainbow is what ours say. If you're hungry and there's no food in the desert, just look for the yellow rainbow and you get your cheeseburger or whatever. Because I don't know, you can find McDonald's in the most places where there's no civilization. Right? You just, the yellow rainbow, is a cheeseburger somewhere over there. Number two, I'm talking too long. I have to be careful with this. Number two, shall renew their strength. Everybody say, renew their strength. So society has taught us waiting is bad. Our system has taught us that waiting is bad. Waiting for something more than five minutes is way too long. How many of you have been in a waiting situation and people already start complaining within a few minutes? You know, I got to have that coffee now. I got to have that Danish now. I got to go. Hello. And it's just been a minute. And then you have other people going, yeah, what about me too? And everybody tries to file a complaint. We give God very little time. The result, we become spiritually weak. Our strength is depleted daily. Did you know that our, our strength is depleted daily? How many know that you've got to rest for at least seven, eight hours because physically your strength is depleted? Come on. You know that. So we need to, we need to marinate in that sleeping mode because of things we face, the temptations the challenge, that challenges us, people who draw on us, daily conflicts we experience depletes us daily, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, physically. Why not wait on the Lord to renew Come on, our strength. And for this reason, God calls us to wait upon Him. And this is a choice, by the way. Those who wait upon God renews. Those who renew, those who wait, because not everybody's going to wait. It's a choice. So if we can wait in line for two hours to get on a thrilling ride at the amusement park, come on. Like at Magic Mountain when you see those roller coasters reaching to the sky and you get in line and there's 3,000 people and they tell you it's five hours to wait. Oh, good! What do you mean good? Well, what are you so excited about that you could wait for five hours to ride this crazy looking monster that could possibly kill you at the end of the ride? It's thrilling, they say. Or how about eating at our favorite restaurant and we have to wait? Nowadays we have to wait, right, because of the pandemic. Sometimes we'll go, okay, let's order, it's Friday, let's celebrate. We'll go eat somewhere and then you go to line and you see everybody there in line, right? You got about 20 people and you're like, oh man. And they all wear masks like they're going to rob the restaurant, right? You can't tell who they are. They're just, phew, what are these people here for, Right? So if we can wait for Star Starbucks coffee, surely we can wait upon the Lord. I mean, I've seen some lines around the corner with Starbucks. I'm like, where's the line? You know how sometimes it's tricky, right? You think, oh, I'm just going to, 
you know, park, and then all of a sudden you look and you go, oh, shoot, the line, you know, you know how somebody will say, oh, I'm sorry, sir, the line is, what? The line is over there. But, but no, it's the line's around the building, around the, the neighbor there, and around that tower, and if you go back to the school, behind the school, then you can, that's where the line is. All right, so if you can wait, you can wait on the Lord, my friend. If you can learn to wait to get on those rides and do those things we do often, then there is really no excuse for us. Come on. We could do all these things. All these things that we do that for, for these things we could do for God. I think we could do it for God. How many can say we can do it for God? Number three, running out of time, shall mount up with eagles as, as weak. I'm sorry, sh- uh, shall mount up with wings as eagles, right? Do you see my wings? I don't have any yet, but wings. We wait upon the Lord. It's like being in an elevator. I want to say this really quickly. Elevation takes place when you're waiting. That means the Spirit of God takes you up into revelation and encounters with God. Man, I tell you, the longer you wait, God begins to present himself, begins to show himself to you when you wait. It's like an elevator. He moves you into revelations and wisdoms and understanding and in these counters. And then you begin to know God yourself because he starts revealing things to you. With this, this is when God himself mentors you, leads you, makes himself known to you. And this is your personal time with him. I said this is your personal time with him. Number four, they run and not be weary. We will run out. Listen, we will not run out of fuel or run out of gas. I'm surprised at how many Christians run out of gas and run out of fuel. Like sometimes we're just moving and doing things for the Lord. And also all these, oh, well, I really can't. I'm just so tired today. Or, or I have this today. And it's just like people just run out of gas, run out of fuel in their faith. They get tired. In the battle, they get tired of serving. They get tired and they just, just, they don't have any more gas. And we become, you know, listen, this is so important. Because when we wait upon the Lord, guess what? You become spiritually fit. Listen, you become spiritually fit for the distance and you are conditioned for the battle. I'm surprised how many people are not conditioned for battles. They hit the first battle, they hit the first testing, they go through the first storm of life and boom, they're gone. That just tells you how fit we are. We're not that fit. But I'm telling you that you can earn your wings. And you can renew your strength. And renew your power. All we have to do is obey the Lord. How many people run out of... How how many people put gas in your car? Do you put gas in your car? Why? Because if you don't, you're not going to go anywhere, right? All right, if you want a vanilla cone at McDonald's around the block, you're going to have to walk it, right? Okay, no amens. All right, let's move on. Um, We have a race to run. Did you have a race to run? We have a race to run. We must learn how to fuel up to keep us going. The last one is they shall walk and not faint. Really quickly, the word faint, this is just an English definition. Insufficient supply of oxygen in your brain. Insufficient supply of oxygen in your brain. How many know God is air? Is He your breath of life? Is He your heartbeat? Is He the air that you breathe in? See, because if we walk away from the oxygen source, we stop breathing. Our walk with God comes to an end. And unfortunately, many have stopped in their walk. They may be physically alive, but spiritually, they're no longer breathing God's presence in their lives. And to me, the breath that counts the most is the breath of God that lives within me. And I hope that is important to you. You may be physically alive, but if you don't have the breath of God in you, all right, then really you're not breathing at all. Because he is the breath of all creation. 
How many know that? Is the breath of life. In closing, and we'll move quickly through this because I know that we have communion. Learn to marinate in God's presence and His Word. Discipline time for Him. Our devotion is like fast food restaurants. We're passing through as quick as we can through our devotions. Don't do that anymore. We don't have time for that. We need to really get in and really be serious about our walk with the Lord. How many can say amen to that? We want to be in church and out of church quick as we can. We want to be an in and out church like in and out burger. Zoom in and zoom out. We want to do a quick prayer. We want the word without chewing it. Come on. We will not be strong enough to face all the challenges. You think this pandemic is big. It's not as big as the, as the ones that are coming. And if you think you're strong enough, it's not about mental toughness. Your, pa- your mental toughness, whether you're doing a thousand push-ups a day, will not overcome what's coming because there's no cure for what's coming. The only cure is called Christ and your faith in Him. And if you have faith in Him, then you will not be shaken and not be overtaken. If you do not, it's going to be big trouble for the world. We're seeing it unfold today, even now before our very eyes. So today, I want to encourage you not to rush, but to marinate in the presence of His uh, of the presence of God and the presence of His Word. And I really believe if you do this, listen, if you do this, I really believe you'll finish the race. And I hope you're committed to the race. Are you committed to the race? Are you willing to finish the race? God put us here, amen, because we have a mission. We're called with purpose. I want you to stand to your feet as we move into celebrating communion together this morning. And if you have your elements with you, um, before I go open up with Scripture, you can go ahead and open it up and be prepared so that we can take it together. And as you're getting ready, I'm going to be reading out of 1 Corinthians 11, starting with verse 23 through verse 26. And it reads like this, For I receive from the Lord and also pass on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying that this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For, for whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you will proclaim the Lord's death. In, in other words, it, this should be a fresh reminder, all right? Sometimes things get old, right? But we need to refresh ourselves and remember that Jesus never gets old. What he's done for you and me should never get old. It should be new and fresh every day. Life every day. Whoops, there goes my phone. Sorry about that. But... I want us to take the bread and put it up to your hands and say, Lord, we thank you for the new covenant. We thank you for the bread that speaks of the bread of life. And we pray that it'll never get stale and old. And we receive all that you have done for us through the body of Christ. In Jesus' name, amen. Partake of the bread together. Likewise, he took the cup. And as he took the cup, he said, this this is the new covenant. This is my blood, which is the new covenant. So this cup represents what he has done for us through his shed blood. And you know, every day I tell myself, man, I'm so glad that the blood of Jesus washes away my sins because I am so not perfect. Come on. Are you not glad that you can be forgiven of your sins? Not once in a while, daily through the blood of Christ. And so we thank you for the blood of Jesus that washes away our sins in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's partake of the cup together. And I want you to get ready to worship the Lord in our final part of the service. Amen. And let's just marinate in worship. Let's just praise Him. Amen.
Well, I just want to thank everyone for uh, just waiting on the Lord this morning. just want you to know that you guys are amazing, that God loves each and every one of you. As we come to a close, I just want to pray that God will keep you and watch over you. And I pray that God will continue to make himself known to you. And that will be the center of your life. If anything, let that be the most exciting thing that takes place in this journey. Father, we thank you for everyone here this morning. We thank you for those that are watching online. We thank you that we celebrate communion together and that we can wait in your presence together. And we pray, Father God, what you've deposited in our hearts, that it will come alive and fill us to overflowing with life and life more abundantly. In Jesus' name, amen. Don't go away. We have an announcement really quick. Amen. Did that word speak to my heart? I tell you, I am. Uh, that was a good word, Pastor. I needed that. Um, it was such a reminder. I know that there's mornings I'm reading the word, and, and then I start to pray and marinate. And all of a sudden, I hear the dog bark. I'm like, oh, the dog needs to go out. And then you're like, oh, I better hurry up and do this before I have my, my Zoom meeting, right? So, you know, I, that was really just an awesome word, Pastor. Thank you so much. Um, just a few announcements. Tuesday nights, we have Women's ta Table Talk. Not this Tuesday. Last, last Tuesday, Dominique led Women's Table Talk. It was just so awesome, mm -hmm. I tell you. And it was, it was nice to hear a young lady share her heart and, and um, lead us in a time to study the word even more and to check our hearts and to pray together and, and just to know we're not alone. And we're able to share with each other. So that's every other Tuesday. And that's via Zoom. So if you can make it, that would be great. Uh, just ask one of us if you don't have the information on how to get connected. Um, also, Wednesday nights, we have uh, the war room, prayer room. Um, we pray heavily for our nation, for each other, for anything that God has laid in our hearts and things that are going on in this world. So join us again. That is via Zoom for now. Um, that may change. And then we have Thursday, Fuel Up Thursdays, and it's just a fresh word. Um, Pastor shares what God has led, what, what has laid in his heart, and um, other people also have shared, and there's been confirmation of things, and again, just a time to, to fellowship and uh, just know what God's doing, and that's so important. Um, so that's it for announcements. As for tithes and offering, we just thank you again for supporting this kingdom, the kingdom business. And we just pray that God would bless you. Um, it's been amazing. I'm telling you, it has been amazing that we have stayed afloat. I don't know if you all know, but there's so many churches that have, have closed. They've had to close because they just don't have, you know, any resources. And, you know, we were able to be, um, to sustain and to stay afloat. And we thank you for that so much. And I'd like to just uh, pray for our tithes and offering. There's two ways to give online. You can go to easy37.org. By the way, easy37.org, for any information, go there because there's a contact us. If you can't find it there, you could hit contact us and we'll send you an email back or a message back. And there's also a basket in the back for you to drop off your tithes, tithes and offering. So let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we come before you humbly, Lord. With a humble heart, Lord, we just praise you and worship you, and we thank you, God, for, for who you are, Lord God, the great I am. We just worship you, Lord, and it's such an awesome um, time to come together in person again, Father God, to be able to worship you and adore you together, Lord God. And I pray, God, that you would just bless those who can give and those who cannot give, Lord, and those who have given, Father. We pray, God, that you continue to pour out on your people, Lord. You've provided for us already enough, Lord, more than enough. And, God, we just pray that you would bless this offering, this tithe, Lord God, and that you would use it for your honor and glory, that you would use it to touch the nations, Lord God, to touch our local community, Father, to set the captives free, Lord, 
And Father, that you would give us divine wisdom on how to use this tithes and offering for you, Lord God. And we just give you all the praise, Lord, and we ask these things in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you all for coming. It's so good to see your beautiful faces. Um, God bless you all. Have a great week.